Yo, what's good people? Today I'm going to be doing a very, very different type of video. So today we're going to be starting off a new series that we're going to be analyzing. As you can see, my name is Please Address. My rank is not my ruler, right? So I created a Smurf account to kind of document my journey to God of Destruction again. But in that process, I wanted to document how I deal with different ranked players. So I'm going to start with red rank because it seems like the majority of people on the channel, and I'm not saying there's people that aren't orange rank and yellow rank and, and so on and so forth. But I feel like the majority of players are red rank. So we're going to start at red, analyze how I deal with those red rank players, what the tendencies of the red rank players are. Then we're going to move to purple rank. So Mighty Ruler went up. Then we're going to move to blue ranks. Then we're going to move to, you know, God rank. So I'm, I think I'm going to stop at tech and God because at that point, I feel like if you reach tech and God, you have a good chance of reaching God of Destruction. It's just minor, minor things. Whereas I feel like maybe if you're hard stuck in blue rank, there, there is room for improvement. So I am going to stop at Tekken God in terms of this series, but I'm going to start at red rank and then work my way up in terms of analyzing my matches, analyzing my opponents, tendencies and, and, and ways to exploit what they're doing. Do me a favor, like, comment, subscribe, like and will help with the algorithm. Commenting will help with the algorithm. Just comment an emoji. I'm not going to lie. I'm getting, it's, it's kind of hard to keep up with this W stuff, but I'm going to try my best. So if you comment an emoji, I'll try my best to comment back a W. And then, you know, subscribing will help me know that you enjoy the content. Before we get into the video, I just want to highlight that I am actually a music producer. So I, I do create instrumentals, beats and stuff like that. So that's one of my hobbies outside of tech and outside of work. So my stuff is going to be linked in the description and the comments. Definitely check my links out and, you know, let me know if you mess with my work. Let's get into the video. OK, so we're going to start with Red Rank. As I said, I've had a lot of comments that, you know, ask me to commentate over my games. Now, that is very difficult when you play at a high rank. And trying to commentate over a game live is very hard so what i'm going to try and do is use my replays and tips feature to offer my you know expertise on certain things i promoted to mighty ruler and then i hopped off so we're going to actually start with red rank so let's start with feng play because i'm actually at the top of orange rank at this point so it's i'm i'm just easing into red rank so let's see how i deal with certain things okay so starting off with feng Obviously, I know the matchup and a lot of it is knowing matchups, but you can get away with not knowing the matchups if you understand how the kind of collection of players or the selection of players in that rank tend to fight. Now, personally, for me, I feel like red ranks don't know how to play their characters very well. So they won't be doing advanced mix ups. They won't be doing optimal combos. They won't be doing optimal heat stuff. It's mainly strings, as you can see here. He's doing a lot of strings, a lot of uh, punishable lows, um, you know, so it's kind of just about stepping back and understanding what they're doing and that can be difficult in the first or two obviously but again just random shoulder on block and that's actually a punish so you're gonna notice a very obvious pattern that i'm very patient towards these players from that single jabs down foot ones mids so see i'm just backing away low parry That was a terrible combo. Actually, yeah, the wall combo wasn't the best. See, random shoulder again. Wrong punish. Strings. Strings. <laughs> so now I'm putting him in a mix. He doesn't respect it. Also, the thing I will say is that you can actually get away with a little bit more. The lower rank you are, the more you can get away with stuff. In general, because there will be some people that do know the matchup. But you will be able to get away with certain things. Just lay on the uh, duck punish. Mash. Just be patient. Honestly, being patient really will really help you in this game. It's only when people start understanding how to use the system mechanics against you very effectively then the not interaction kind of thing yeah you need to start interacting a little bit more but in these ranks you can not interact and be fine because as i said these people don't know how to use heat as as optimally if that makes sense so it's 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 a tough one to get your head around at first but once you once it clicks in your head like okay this is what this type of player plays like this is what the these players in this rank play like You'll be fine. Again, no reason for him to do uh, Snake Edge there. That was very unnecessary, I feel like. 
He's dead, I think. Not quite. Just backing away. <laughs> Shoulder. So yeah, they will kill themselves. It's just, you do need the patience. For example, at the end of that round, if I was like, I need to finish him off, I need to finish him off. I could have got hit by that shoulder and then he could have, you know, done something on Oak. He size depth four and I could have lost the round because of that. So it's, I think patience is very, very important in these ranks. So let's analyze the second set and see if he does anything differently to adapt to what I'm doing. I'm playing very patiently. So let's see if the Feng player does anything to adapt to my style. I already know how these players fight. So it's like, I don't really need to do, and I won by the way. So it's like, well, I'm not going to change what I did. Now it's on him to adapt to my style. So let's see what he does. Let's see what he does at the start of the round. Punch parry at the start of the round. So it's, yeah, again. Also, what I'd recommend is trying to play as frame tight as possible against these players because they will mash into certain stuff, you know, more often than, you know, higher ranked players. That's just kind of how Tekken ranks work. Again, shoulder. Strings. So matchup knowledge obviously is important in Tekken 8, but I feel like you can get around it if you if you know tendencies of players, you kind of can get around it. It's more important than Tekken 7 for sure though. That's one thing I will say is matchup knowledge is definitely more important in Tekken 8 than 7. Just because of all this heat stuff, you know, it's very, it's very oppressive. Might have been a bit of lag there. It's a difficult combo. Strings. Random shoulder, launch. Should be dead here, but I'm not sure what I did for the combo. Oh, uh, is he dead? Yeah, he's dead. Let's hit combo. Okay, let's see. Let's see what he does now. Because usually when it's when they're two rounds down, they usually do kind of throw the kitchen sink a little bit. A little bit more. He tried to shoulder as well. <laughs> One, two, four. Ah, I was late on that. So let me show you something. So if you do a running three, back turn two is a frame trap. So they can't heat burst. They can't rage art. They can't power crush. So that is a very good option to, you know, stay safe from system mechanics. And, and I did a video explaining how to counter system mechanics. I didn't lose. I got promoted. The player pool is very small just because I'm ranking up very quickly. So this can be quite difficult to gauge in terms of how they play. Uh, let's do, let's do the Lee player. Let's see. Let's analyze Lee. Because Lee has a lot of strings as well that can catch you and they're very annoying. So let's see if he does a lot of strings. Let's see how he approaches neutral. Um, but yeah, the, the kind of theme and the pattern here for me in red ranks is they do a lot of strings and they, they don't play their character optimally. They don't do optimal combos. They throw unsafe stuff out and they panic at the end of rounds. So using that information, I can play very conservatively, frame tight. Um, obviously, matchup knowledge does come into play, but again, strings. Back two, two, three. They tend to duck as well at the end of rounds. I noticed uh, lower lower level players. Okay, strings. Missed the whiff punish opportunity there. Lee's a weird one because it's like his 4-4-3 propels him so far. It's it's hard to actually that was a nice with punish, but it's it's hard to gauge the distance where you need to be optimally to punish him. So that can be a weird move to, you know, with punish. So burn heat now. So I've made him waste heat, so he does not have heat anymore. I'm running out of heat. And I I I burned it. <laughs> just as I was running out, because like, let's just throw out heat smash. You know, you don't really want to run out of heat without using it in a round. It's definitely important to use system mechanics as much as possible in, in this game. Should have ducked, but I ducked the string here and launched. Again, you can get away with certain things, which is why I'm doing certain unsafe stuff, because I know, okay, I can get away with it. But, you know, see, yeah. That was just good timing on my part. I don't think he did anything necessarily bad there. 
Just I had good timing on his timing. Terrible combo. <laughs> Again, the same thing. What does this Lee player do to adapt to me? Does he make any adaptations? Does he make any changes to the way he's approaching Raven? So let's find out and see what kind of changes he does. If I remember correctly, he doesn't make any changes. And that's my point. These players, once you figure out what works against this kind of pool of players, generally, generally speaking, because there will be exceptions, obviously, in any anything you talk about, you can't just generalize everything. But in general, a certain style is going to work. Being frame tight, um, you know, having good matchup knowledge, being patient at the end of rounds and just being patient on okay situations as well. They do tend to kill themselves a lot in those situations, in my experience. So definitely and doing immediate timing mix-ups as well because sometimes when i'm trying to think too much when i'm trying to mix people up too much it doesn't work i tend to just stick to immediate timing when i'm fighting lower level players and i find that that gives me the most success in terms of mix pe mixing people up because they will just mash because they don't know what you're doing they'll just mash so again immediate timing imagine if i teleported there what well, i would have gotten hit right so let's see i should have launched it that's also another move that is very hard to gauge in terms of how far you need to be to punish it because he can space it to where it's not launch so that's that's difficult to deal with as well okay that's fine punish see what i mean i tried to launch it then it just wasn't launch because he spaced it well that was good spacing by him to make it safer than launch because it's still punishable but at that range i think it would have been minus 11 or something like that so whilst only four let's see yeah he's not really making any adaptations to be honest it's just like i think he's not doing as many strings that's the one thing i will say so he's not doing as much two two three as i said it he did it maybe not <laughs> maybe he panicked i don't know but i was gonna say that he wasn't doing as many strings which were getting him killed so right now, I'm just going for immediate timing mixes. I need to work on my uh, back turn heat stuff. Okay, let's look at Yoshimitsu. Yoshimitsu is a very oppressive character in this game, but he's a character where he can be played very lame. He has good fundamental tools. He has a safe down forward too. He's got good punishment, good movement, you know, good evasive tools. He's very very complete in this game i feel like so let's see how i deal with yoshimitsu simple mid check at the start of the round he tried to do something big i caught it and now he's at the wall let's see what i'm doing and sometimes i will like it would take me a little bit to adapt to these sorts of play styles like these crazy play styles as you can see he's just it, it does take me a little bit of time to adapt to how this Yoshimitsu is playing. Okay. Take him to the wall. Ah, I dropped the combo. And heat smash. He might have... I'm, I'm not sure if he thought that was punishable or if he panicked, but... Again, you definitely need to know your optimal rage up punish, which is down four to four, four, three. That we get you the most damage. It's just small things that I pick up on when coaching people as well, is that they don't maximize, you know, um, easy punishments. Because it's 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 easy to say, just maximize punishment, right? That that's an easy thing to say. But when it comes to things like rage arts and people are doing one plus two to punish it, it's it's not optimal and it, that's not a hard punish. Down forward 443 after rage out, you can just mash down forward 44444 and then press free, you know? So, not necessarily hard punish, but this is what I mean. Just small things you really do need to capitalize on. Terrible punish. Should have just jabbed. Okay. So, playing frame tight. So let me go back. So I, I said I was playing frame tight. So I did down back to one into jabs to mitigate the flash uh, threat of flash. Punish. So he has to come to me now. Like I, I have the life lead. See what I mean? So I have the life lead. I'm just going to stay back. 
I'll wait for him to whiff. Should have punished it. That's unsafe. So yeah, he kind of just misjudged the heat burst there and I was able to take the round. So again, it's like, if you know you have the life lead, you don't need to take unnecessary risks. I see people trying to force the back turn mix on Oki when they have the life lead. I see people trying to go in a bit too much. There's a very fine line between each kind of element of playstyle. So again, it's up to you to kind of understand what works against these opponents. For me personally, I feel like having a blend of defensive play, playing frame tight, being patient, but then picking your, your opportunities to be aggressive. Because most of the times when you're trying to mix people up with Raven, they will mash in this rank. So it's more about fundamental play and trying to elevate your fundamentals. And um, once you, you know, once you have better fundamentals than these players, you're probably not going to lose to red ranks ever again. And then that's where you elevate to purple rank and then the cycle continues. So do you build your fundamentals to beat these type of players or do you kind of explore your flow chart options, your knowledge checking options? Because that can also help as well. But let's check out this last game. And again, let's see how he adapts and if he makes any adaptations, because I don't know. I can't recall all of these sets. So let's see. See where does it round start? Let's see. So he spins away. It's fine. That was nice. Okay. So he killed himself a little bit. Didn't need to do that. I knew he was going to duck, so I just did it. And again, I can get away with strings and stuff in, in this rank. So that's why I'm doing it. Nice. Again, killed himself. Didn't need to do that. I was grounded. Like, you didn't need to do that. You know what I mean? So again, just having that little bit of extra patience will really help you in, in this rank. I would say, I mean, in Tekken in general, but especially in this rank. Will really, really help you. Yeah, he got mixed. Just standing there, I, I don't know. Okay. Didn't duck. But that string is actually a mix up to, uh, you know, duck launch. Just focus on the game. But let's see how I close it out. Let's see what I'm doing to close out this round because I have the life lead but it's not massive and that was BS by the way again killed himself with a you know full crouch sweep and he didn't tech roll so he was able to take the round so again I hope you kind of have a better idea of how to tackle these red rank players again for me I would emphasize you know patient play on Oki don't try to force a mix up on Oki sometimes on Oki you can do nothing you know Sometimes you don't need to attack. Sometimes you can take that life lead. That's all you need to win the round is the life lead because they're going to come at you, kill themselves, try to do launchers, throw the kitchen sink at you. I would promote the patient play. I feel like it works the best in this rank. It's only when you start fighting players that know how to optimally use their character, how to optimally use heat, how to mix you up off every Oki situation. Then yes, you might have to interact a little bit more to kind of fight offense with offense a little bit more in higher ranks. I feel like that works. I feel like... Being too defensive in high ranks is not gonna is not gonna work. And typically in EU, the most defensive players are now interacting more than they would have in Tekken 7. So this game is very, very aggressive and not interacting too much is a way to lose the match or lose the set or lose the round. So definitely patient play is the key. But I hope you enjoyed. Peace.